Good morning, and thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're talking about the apostles and their encounters with Jesus. And today uh, we will be talking about Judas, Judas Iscariot. We know his name, Judas, the one called Iscariot, from the um, Synoptic Gospels. We also know uh, that he betrayed Jesus, that Jesus predicted that betrayal. We're told how he did it, um, and uh, we're, we're told that he died. Uh, we're also told of his death in the first chapter of the book of Acts. But I think the most interesting details we have about him uh, that really color everything else we know about him comes from John the 12th chapter. John writing at the end of the first century, as always, gives us the extra details gives us names, gives us um, uh, episodes that, uh, that we have not been told about yet that really uh, flesh out and um, uh, give a deeper dimension uh, to our understanding of the Gospels. <clears throat> Judas, in all the lists of the Apostles, is mentioned as a man called Iscariot. And, of course, that's a Greek version of whatever the Aramaic uh, phrase or word was. Um, most people think that it means one of two things. One is that he is a man from Kerioth, from the, from the town of Kerioth, uh, which is not in Galilee, which would sort of make him an outsider. And others see uh, uh, Iscariot being uh, a spelling of Ishikari, or the man of the dagger. Um, among the zealots, there were a particularly hardcore, uh, almost a special ops group skilled at assassinations called the Sakari, the Dagger Men. Uh, and it's uh, tantalizing to think that perhaps one of the apostles was such a man. If so, then his political and religious views are very much to the right of even the Pharisees uh, before he becomes an apostle of Jesus. The episode that we have from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, happens during the last week of Jesus' life before he is crucified. And in that episode, we are told that, um, that Judas is the one who carries the purse, who is the treasurer for the group of apostles. Interesting that Matthew isn't, but maybe not so interesting at all. Um, um, and we're also told that he used to pilfer money that was put into that purse, and, and uh, jo John calls him a thief. Um, I wonder who he's spending the money on. If it were himself, I think they would know. The, the, these 12 men are always vying for top spot. They're always arguing about who's the greatest. They're always wanting to know what about this guy, what about that guy. And certainly if he were spending lots of money on himself, someone would have noticed that. So I've always wondered what he's spending the money on, what happened to that cash. Most of all, we wonder why he betrayed Jesus. Uh, and I don't know that we have the answer to that, only that he regretted it afterwards. And the gospel writers are clear about that. It was necessary because of the crowds. <clears throat> there could have been half a million or more people from out of town in the environment of Jerusalem that week. Uh, Passover week. Uh, Judas is the one who knows where Jesus is going to be when they can take him quietly, secretly. And that's what he provides. He knows they're going to the Garden of Gethsemane. He's the one who, in the darkness, betrays Jesus by kissing him so that the temple guard will know who to grab. And, uh, and he's the one who betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He comes to regret that and, um, and gives the money back and uh, is treated very terribly by the Sanhedrin. What is that to us? We don't care that you violated your conscience. He throws the money back uh, and then commits suicide. We're told in Matthew that he hangs himself. We're told in the book of Acts that he fell headlong, uh, hit the ground, and his entrails burst out. Uh, I don't think those are two uh, contradictory accounts. I think he hung himself uh, and his body stayed there until it rotted through and his body fell and, and burst open. Uh, the money was used uh, to purchase a, a field, the potter's field, where strangers and, and homeless people um, 
people who had no family were buried before that. They were just thrown into the Valley of Hinnom. There's something uh, that's sweetly ironic about that. <clears throat> the Valley of Hinnom was the, the town dump. It was this ravine outside the city where the sewers uh, fed, where people threw the corpses of criminals and animals and just people tossed their junk and it was always smoldering and on fire. And it's the place that Jesus uses to describe hell. And it's just a sweet irony that the blood money for Jesus provided a place for people to be buried so they wouldn't be cast into Gehenna. Um, uh, we we uh, have a hard time not feeling a little bit of sorrow over Judas because of his remorse. I know that people feel sometimes that he was ill-treated, that he was in a deterministic plan, and that he had no choice. Well, I do know this. He had a choice after he committed his sin. He was not beyond grace. And in the same way that Peter was forgiven after he betrayed Jesus, I have no doubt that Judas could have received grace just as much. Well, that's what we know about Judas. I'll leave him to your cogitation and your thoughts. Uh, and tomorrow we'll start talking about the Apostle Paul.